Okay, if we're going to be doing uh, categorical logic with Venn diagrams, there's a little bit of a problem we've got to take a look at. There's no way of getting around it. When we're dealing with universal statements like all SRP, no SRP, they're ambiguous. And it took a long time for people to figure this out, but we actually can mean two different things by it. There's no problem with the existential or particular statements, some S or P, some S or not P. I'm only talking the all and the no statements. Imagine if we're at some bar or whatnot, we're having some, some drinks, we're having a perfectly normal conversation. You're intelligent, I'm intelligent, we've had some college background, and uh, I start bemoaning my lot in life. And I tell you this, I give you this A statement. I say the following, all the dogs in my neighborhood are barkers. Okay, now I, and I sigh just a little bit. What do you think I'm saying? Well, what do you think I mean? Well, I'm a normal person, you're a normal person, we're having a normal conversation. What I mean, you know what I mean, is there's dogs in my neighborhood and they all bark. And they're keeping me awake at night, that's why I'm kind of bleary-eyed right now. So you take pity upon me and buy the next round of beer. So when I say all S or P, you're, I'm actually making two claims. This, the S's exist, and every, every single one of them is a P. That's a very normal thing to say. All cats are animals. Cats exist, and every single one of them is an animal. Uh, all Fords are cars or vehicles. You know, what you're saying is, okay, Fords exist, and they're all vehicles. The conversation continues on a bit. Uh, we started remembering classes we took in college. I remember this Greek mythology class I took. And I, I want to say the following. And I can tell you about unicorns. All unicorns are white animals. All unicorns are white animals. What do you think I mean? I'm a perfectly normal, thoughtful, moderately educated guy. Do you think I believe in unicorns? No, I'm, I'm not nuts. I, I don't believe in unicorns. When I say all unicorns exist, what I mean is if there were any unicorns, they would all be white animals. I also believe that all vampires are bloodsuckers, but I don't believe that vampires exist. And when I say all vampires are bloodsuckers, what I mean is if there were any vampires, and I don't say there are, then they'd all be bloodsuckers. All leprechauns are little green Irish guys. I don't believe in leprechauns, but maybe I believe that if you were a leprechaun, you'd be a little green Irish guy, or maybe a little Irish, little green Irish gal. All mermaids are fishy smelling creatures. I don't believe in mermaids, but I'm saying if there were any mermaids, they'd all be fishy smelling creatures. The second interpretation is called a modern or the Boolean standpoint. George Boole kind of came up with the, the notion in the 19th century, so it's sometimes named after him. The modern um, interpretation, the Boolean interpretation. The other one, the first one's called the traditional or the Aristotelian interpretation. Aristotle who invented a lot of this logic. He just was figured we'd be talking about things that existed. So if somebody is to offer an S or a, a statement like all S or P, they'd be meaning there's S's in the world, they exist, and they're all P's. But we've got to make this distinction. I make the following suggestion. If we see an argument, we look at the premises, and if the argument is about mermaids and unicorns, let's just use the Boolean standpoint or the modern standpoint. We won't assume they exist. We'll just assume the arguer is saying, if there were any unicorns, they'd all be white animals. If the argument's about dogs, cats, rats, things that actually exist, like raindrops, uh, then we'll take the traditional standpoint or the Aristotelian standpoint. And we'll assume, like in a perfectly normal conversation, that the person actually believes raindrops or dogs exist, and every single one of them is a pain in the neck, or whatever we might be saying. So we'll come back to this when we start looking at the Venn diagrams. We'll want to make a decision as to whether the things exist or not. And if they exist, we'll take the Aristotelian, the traditional standpoint. If the things don't exist, then we'll take the modern. What if we don't agree? What if it's angels? Well, then we might want to take a look at both interpretations and see what happens. If the argument's good both ways, it really doesn't matter. If the argument's bad both ways, it does matter. Uh, well, it wouldn't matter. If it turns out the argument's good one way but bad the other, then it looks like the strength of the argument, the validity of the argument, is going to depend upon how we understand that, uh, the premise. But let's keep it simple and we'll take a look at some Venn diagrams. And we'll deal with things that clearly exist or clearly don't exist. And we'll know how to handle the difference between the traditional and the modern standpoints.